Now we're getting into a real world situation where I've plugged the XCOM radio into a test box and hooked it up to an aerial so you can understand how everything works correctly. At the moment, we've got two frequencies in. Second frequency, 134.5, is for our local ATIS. If I make that active by using the flip flop, you'll hear the information come through. Temperature 28, QNH1014. On first contact with Gold Coast Tower, Bristol approach that for Now, as I mentioned before with Dual Watch, if we activate Dual Watch, and 134.5 is on the secondary frequency, you'll hear a pipping sound. 360 degrees, 5 knots, crosswind, uh, maximum 1. If I make 134.5 the active okay, frequency, okay. you'll hear there's no pipping okay, sound coming one. through. So that's how it's easy to First identify tower, which frequency is actually tower. coming through on dual watch. Go, go, similar information, Charlie. Runway 32. Degrees, now the squelch setting is particularly the, important when you're using one. dual watch. If the squelch is setting correctly, okay. then the radio won't work yeah, properly. Two, I'll just turn yeah. off dual watch momentarily. Our squelch is currently set at 25, so somewhere around about 25 to 30 is perfect for normal use. If I wind the squelch up to say 40, that'll reset by itself in a second. Press the dual watch. Crosswind, uh, maximum one. You can see the delay in the uh, flickering of the dual watch is actually much longer. But if I make the channel active, quite often it won't come back and be able to hear the frequency. As you can hear, there's complete silence. If I turn dual watch off, the frequency will come through again correctly. Dual watch is really important to be set correctly by using the squelch. Wind the squelch down until we start to hear static coming through. So I've got static on 20, but not on 21. So what I suggest you do is go to squelch setting of 20 and then go up two units. And that's how to correctly set dual watch. I activate dual watch again. And, uh, maximum one, two. And here it coming through, if we change okay. frequencies, temperature two, eight. it'll come through automatically. Two, eight, one, again, one, if I flip flop down, first contact with Gold Coast Tower, it'll come first through. First Something first I didn't point out earlier in the uh, earlier information is the fact that the cursor also Welcome flashes while you're Welcome monitoring the standby three, frequency. Three, if you're monitoring the active Curse frequency, the cursor four. does not flash. First contact with Gold Coast. Okay, we're back to normal. The intercom is another feature which is often accessed during flight. To access the intercom, simply press the mode button once and we can adjust the intercom volume level so you can hear it getting louder and then we can turn the intercom volume down and you'll hear it slowly, slowly, slowly getting quieter and quieter. Normally I run the intercom at or around a value of, of about 50 units. To access the intercom squelch, press the mode button again momentarily and we can see here 25 is about where I normally use it in flight. But as we're sitting in an office doing this, if I turn it up higher, one, two, three, one, 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 you can see I actually have to talk fairly loud to get the intercom squelch to break. A lot of people confuse this with the radio squelch, and they shouldn't be confused because they're treated as two separate entities. You've got radio squelch for incoming transmissions. You have intercom squelch for talking to the co-pilot. To exit out any of these screens, again, just press the flip-flop button. Memory channel information is something which our customers sometimes have difficulty with. But as I'll show you, it's very easy to do. Just check what's currently in the memory channels. I just momentarily press the memory button. And I can see here we've got the normal NOAA channels and we've got the primary frequency, the emergency frequency, 121.5. This tells me that there's nothing entered into memory frequencies. Now, to enter, go back to the main screen, press and hold the memory button for about two seconds. The channel one is currently active, so it, it's flashing, so it tells us that that's a next available channel. Now, if I wanted to enter, say, uh, 126.7, press that, the function knob, go round, to 126, press again, decimal 7, 
Everything is in there. Press and hold the memory button until the word stored is momentarily displayed. It'll come up now showing you channel 2 is the next available option. I want to enter into there 119.0. 119. Decimal zero. Press and hold the memory button again until the word stored is entered. So I've just easily entered two memory channels. I want to now mem enter memory channel 119 decimal 5. Press and hold. And so on. To exit any time, I just press the flip flop button. Now, when I go to check the memory channels, press memory, the priority frequency. Channel 1, 1267, which we've entered, channel 2, channel 3, and so on, up to the NOAA channels. If I want a memory channel scan at any time, so scan those frequencies, all I need to do is press the memory button and then press the channel knob. And there we go, we're off memory channel scanning. If it receives a transmission on any of the memory frequencies, it'll momentarily stop and receive that information. As you can see there, the transmission is received. We'll try again. As you can see, the transmission is received and it momentarily stays on that channel for approximately three seconds, listening for any reply. And then the unit will go off scanning again until it finds another frequency where the transmission is coming through. Well, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed our short presentation. And should you have any additional questions, please send me an email or refer to the website for more information. Safe flying and good tailwinds.